When working with small multiple charts or panel charts as they're also known, it's handy to be able to toggle the chart axes between the same axis for each chart and using their own axis. Using the same axis enables you to compare the data between the charts because they all use the same scale, whereas using their own axis is useful when there are large variances from one chart to the next, which can result in charts with lower values being difficult to read. Now I've used a form control and some sneaky formatting to create the toggle buttons. Let me show you how to set it up. In this worksheet I've already inserted four column charts and you can see each chart is connected to its own set of data. Also notice that the vertical axis for each chart is different and that's because Excel automatically determines the axis minimum and maximum based on the chart's data. Now to create a common axis scale each chart must have the same minimum and maximum values plotted, and we do this with what I call a ghost series. That is a series in the chart that you can't see. I'll use the min and max functions for this. So first of all, you want to find the minimum of each series. And I'm just holding down control while I select them. That automatically inserts the comma between each range. With it selected, F2 to activate edit mode, Shift and Home to select the data, Control C and I'm going to press enter and then in this cell paste in the formula and change it to max. So there's my ghost series values. Now all I need to do is add these to my chart. So with the header selected and the two values Control C to copy, select each chart one by one and Control V to paste it in. Now you can see instantly all four chart axes are the same but I've got these ugly blue columns in my chart. So let's get rid of those with the column on the first chart selected, control one to open the formatting pane. Normally this would be docked over on the right, but I've undocked it. And then we could just go, in, go into editing and I want to choose no fill. Let's repeat that for each chart. And that just hides the columns. So you can't see them just like a ghost, hence the name. Okay. So now we have our ghost series in the charts and the axes are all the same. We need to set up a way that we can turn the same axis setting on and off. That is remove the values for the ghost series from the chart altogether to allow each chart to go back to its automatic axis scale. To set this up, I'm going to use form control radio buttons. You'll find them on the developer tab of the ribbon. Now, if you don't have the developer tab activated or enabled, you can right click on the ribbon, customize the ribbon, and then over here, make sure developer is checked. You'll find the radio buttons on the insert drop down and then up in form controls. Now I want two radio buttons and I want one to turn off when the other is selected and vice versa. So first I need a group box to put them in. I'm just going to put them in this cell here. So holding down alt, it's going to snap to grid and let's just make sure it's the full width. So there's my group box. Let's select the text in there and delete it. I don't want a name for that group box. Now I'm ready to insert the radio button. Here it is here. Select it and then left click and drag to draw it in. And that's the first one we're going to call this one, same axis. And then I'll just control and left click and then hold down shift and control to copy, copy it across left clicking and dragging. And then we're going to change this to own axis. So there's my two radio buttons. Next thing I need to do is link them to a cell in the worksheet so I know which radio button is selected. So right click, format control, cell link on the control tab. I'm going to pop it in here, cell W18. Now because they're in a group box, I don't need to also link this one, it's automatically linked. So when I select this radio button, it returns the number one, it's the first button, and this is the second one, and it returns the number two. Now I can edit the min and max functions to respond to the radio button selection. So in the formula bar, we're going to change this to an if formula that says if the radio button selected equals number two, then return zero, otherwise return the minimum of all of the charts. And again, we're going to say if the radio button selected is number two, return zero, otherwise return the maximum. And you can see the charts have all reverted to their own axes because the ghost series are now worth zero, their value is zero. So essentially they're not 
affecting the axis height. When I select same axis, the ghost series values return and they're plotted in the chart. So that's how we toggle between same axis and own axis using these radio buttons. And that's it. However, radio buttons are a bit ugly. They're a super old feature and as a result, they don't have any formatting options. That said, if you use the Active X control versions, these do have some limited formatting options, but they also require you to save the file as a .xlsm macro enable workbook. And I try to avoid that wherever possible because it's just another layer of hassle requiring the user to enable macros, etc. Instead, I'm going to use conditional formatting and some shapes to make them look a bit more modern. Let's do the conditional formatting first. So on the home tab of the ribbon with the first cell selected for same access, conditional formatting, new rule. I want to use a formula and all I'm going to do is say where this cell equals one, I'm going to format the cell fill color yellow. So let's select it. So the conditional formatting is working. Let's set it up for this one as well. Again, new rule using a formula where this cell equals two, I'm going to format it yellow. Let's test it. So that's working nicely. Now, unfortunately, I can't get rid of the group box outline and I can't change the fonts or anything else to do with the radio buttons, but I can kind of hide it. And I do that with a shape. So let's grab this rectangle with the rounded corners and I'm just going to hold down Alt, which is going to snap the rectangle to the grid, to the cell. I'm going to round the corners a bit more, dragging the yellow button. And then I don't want any fill, but I do want a white outline. And I want to make the outline quite thick. So we're going to go six point and that's just going to create the rounded edges. We need to make it a little bit bigger to hide the group box. So just play around with that until you get it just right. You might need to make the outline slightly wider. That seems to work. So now with it selected, I'm just going to hold down control and shift left click and drag it across to the other one. Let's select it. We might need to do some tweaking on the position of the shape and likewise for this one. There we go. So you can play around it with it a bit more. You might need to move your radio button to center it a bit more. So there you have radio buttons that toggle the chart axis between each chart's own axis heights versus the same axis across all charts. I hope you like this video and have some ideas where you can use these techniques yourself. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. Why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.